Hello drummers and other creatures. It's another beautiful day in London and I've got my earphones in, which means we're going to be doing some work with the metronome. We're going to be looking at the tunnel test today. What happens when you're driving in your car? You're listening to the radio, if that's something people do anymore. If you've got a song on, you're bobbing your head and you're singing along to it, or you're drumming on the steering wheel as you do and you go into a tunnel and you lose the radio signal. You keep singing along to the song. You keep drumming on the steering wheel. And when you emerge from the tunnel, are you still in time with the song or not? Very often you're not. But the tunnel test is what we call a scenario where we put our metronome on and we play along and we arrange to have the metronome drop out for a certain amount of time, measured in bars usually, and see if we can still maintain a good tempo for still in time with the metronome even when we can't hear the damn thing. And uh, this is a, a very good exercise to do to help develop your strong inner sense of timing. Now I'm going to introduce this in a particular way today, but uh, any way you go about doing this once you see the ideas that I'm putting forward today, I'm sure you come up with your own ideas of what to do with this. Now in order to achieve the effect of the metronome cutting in and out, I'm using an app called Pro Metronome which exists uh, as far as I know in Android and iOS ecosystems. Um, I'm not affiliated to this but it's as far as I can tell the best application of the metronome variety that I'm, that I'm aware of anyway. If there's something better let me know. Um, but it, it has a feature to allow you to do the tunnel test. Um, I'm sure you can work it out. I'll get the app, it's fantastic, and uh, that's what I'm going to be used. That's what I'm going to be used, that's what I'm going to be using. And I'm going to start off by giving a quick demonstration of playing along to two bars of click and two bars of no click. And let's see how I do. That was 100 beats per minute, 100 BPM, two bars of click, two bars of silence. And I'm dealing with just clicks on, on quarter notes. One, two, three, four. That's all we're going to worry about today. Uh, you may have come across uh, different ways of using the metronome with clicks falling in funny places and so on. All of that is super cool and lots of fun, but I'm all about getting the hang of the basics and this is an exercise that you can do even if you're not really used to using a metronome, uh, as long as you're not afraid of uh, sort of wobbling on your, on your bicycle a little bit before you know how to drive or ride it in a straight line, uh, you can go ahead and, and have a go at this, it's lots of fun. Um, this is also something I'm gonna show you now, but you don't have to be uh, sitting at your drums. You don't even have to be a drummer. You don't have to be any sort of a musician if you wanna try and exercise your inner clock. Uh, you can have a go at this. Now, um, the trick here, again, I'm, I'm using an app that allows me to um, set a certain number of bars where it plays the metronome and then stops playing the metronome but keeps time. Uh, if you don't have access to that, I think everyone does have uh, some sort of smartphone or something, but in the event that you don't, you can uh, create a recording of it. Um, maybe I'll, I'll try and produce some uh, digital recordings with this effect. There's also a series of play-along tracks called Test of Time, 
as part of a, a series of play-alongs called Turn It Up and Lay It Down. Uh, I'll try and remember or look up the details because it's cool. You've got some nice um, tracks with various styles and it does the same thing. You're playing along to the music and then it drops out and you need to try and keep time. So uh, that's cool. There's lo hundreds of tracks. I recommend you buy it, actually. Again, I'm not affiliated with any of the products I mentioned in this today. Anyway, uh, let's move on and get some work done. Now, I'm going to start off and uh, my little demonstration there, and I mean, you may have noticed, you know, it wasn't perfect when I came back in uh, with the metronome. And we're not really worried about that. We're, we're interested in uh, heightening our perception. So whatever we're about to do, if you can't do it and, and hit the one when the, you know, if you're not keeping perfect time through the absence of metronome, there's no problem. It's it's the, the, the failure is the teaching, right? The failure is the thing that simulates, well, not si simulates, I don't know what's simulating your brain, but the failure is the thing that stimulates you to, uh, or stimulates your brain to kind of jiggle the little connections and make this all really good. So, so the thing that's helping you develop your sense of time is not necessarily your ability to do this perfectly. If you're doing it imperfectly, again, the kind of adjustment you have to make to try and get it right I think that's the thing that's making your brain learn. Now, I'm going to, to start off. Um, okay, let's talk about the tempo that we're gonna do this at, I suppose. Um, we're going to start off with 100 beats per minute. And this whole exercise is a lot easier when you do it at slightly faster tempos, because obviously the margin for error gets a bit smaller. So if you miss the one at 100 BPM, um, it's a lot less painful than if you miss the one at 40 BPM, which, uh, wait and see. Okay, so I'm gonna start off 100 BPM. Yeah, you can start off any tempo that's not too slow um, and that you're comfortable playing. Don't try and do this exercise at tempos where you find the, uh, the speed is a bit too much for you. Okay, now, I'm just gonna adjust this. So to start off with, what we're going to do is we're gonna play three bars of click and one bar of silence. Again, remember, whatever we're doing today, whatever I'm showing you today, you can extrapolate any kind of uh, form of practice from this uh, according to what you find enjoyable and entertaining. So 100 BPM, I've got three bars of click, one bar of silence. Is it doing that? No, I'm doing it. See, I set it the wrong way around. Let's try again. Yeah, okay. Start again. That was three bars of silence, one bar of click, which would be a bit brutal, but we, we might get to that. Um, three bars of click, one bar of silence. Two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. Three, two, three, four. Four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so step one, let's put this on the floor, Tom, actually, because then otherwise every time I turn away from the mic, it sounds funny. Step one, count along with your click. Now, if we start off with three bars, click, one bar of silence, it's not so painful. It's, it's easier to get going. Remember, you don't have to be doing this perfectly for the learning to happen. So I know some people feel like they don't get things right the first time around, that something's wrong. But three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, Four, two, three, four. Now, you can do this exercise while you're washing the dishes or while you're going for your morning walk, which is something that I do occasionally. Uh, you can put your metronome on as and when you're able to give it a little focus and count along. Uh, another thing you can do quite happily is if you don't mind singing to yourself or improvising a little bit. Da ba dum dum da ba do ba do ba da ba do ba do do da. And so on. It's fun. Now, 
Next thing, once you've done some counting or singing, we're going to play the drums and I'm just going to play a simple rock beat. Why not? I'm not going to do anything else. Two, two, three, four. Three, two, three, four. Four, two, three, four. Okay, nice. Spend some time doing that. Don't do just four repetitions. Spend some time. And when you start feeling really comfortable with it, when you start to notice that your ability to come back in on the one after that little bar of silence, then you can try the next thing, which is to play some fills. Now, hopefully I'm not going to hit my floor tom with the phone. Uh, the young kids of today, they're very good at putting their phones on the drum and not hitting the damn things. But uh, let's see. Wish me luck. Two, three. Okay, now we've got some fills in there, 100 beats per minute. You get the idea. Now, keep working on it for as long as you want, but once you start thinking it's feeling quite good, when you start developing a bit of confidence in your sense of time, the next thing to do is to go down. Now, if you've watched any of my videos before, which some of you may have, uh, you know I'm kind of a sucker for doing things slowly, and this is an exercise where we start off fast, and we work our way back to slow. We're getting there. So I'm going to go down to 80 beats per minute now. And uh, you might find that, yeah, you want to move in smaller increments. So you can go from 100 to 90 to 80, whatever. You don't have to jump straight to 80. Everyone's different. So first, I'm going to just play some grooves. Now, as you get slower, you're going to start noticing that keeping the time through the gap gets a little bit more tricky. And this is where learning how to count, and you, you know, again, I'm obsessed with counting, but counting through uh, an exercise like this, and you might want to count quarters, you might find it uh, easier to keep the time if you count eights, but learning how to count can be a super, super useful, useful tool to helping you keep time through the gap. Let's see if I can play some fills now, again, hopefully without smashing my phone. Two, three, four, two, two, three, four.
There we are. Sit at 80 BPM, wherever you go down to. Let's go to 60. Again, if you do try this at home, maybe you're gonna go in increments of 10 down. Maybe you're gonna go down in increments of five. Do whatever feels comfortable to you. You don't have to exactly follow what I'm doing as long as you get the idea. So I'm gonna try this. I keep saying so, it's annoying, isn't it? Um, I'm gonna try doing this now at 60 BPM and let's see what happens. Again, that gap starts to get longer and my sense of space uh, is also, maybe, maybe I'm a little bit more daunted, I suppose, by the, the prospect of having to keep time through that bar of four beats at 60 BPM. That's one per second, I'll have you know. Two, three, and four, and. Okay, dignity intact, hopefully, I hope so. Um, that's down to 60 BPM. Now again, you, you can start to feel the gap. So glutton for punishment that I am, I'm going to go down to 40, okay? I repeat myself a lot, don't I? But you may go down in smaller increments, but we're gonna go, how far can I go? How far down can I go? Am I going to go all the way? That's what you've got to ask yourself. Stay and watch this video and see if I go all the way. Where's the bottom of this metronome? 40 beats per minute. I've been jumping in, but I, let's, let's allow ourselves to feel the count. I'm gonna count through this, and uh, maybe I'm not being emphatic enough today about the need to count, but I'm gonna count my way through one four bar phrase here, one four bar sequence, and then I'm gonna come in and play. Two and three and four and and two and three and four and three and two and three and four and four and two and three. Now, where's the accuracy gone? Where's the one? I think I'm rushing it a little bit there, aren't I? I don't know, I'll have to listen back. But I'm, I don't feel like I'm hitting the one very accurately. And what I've been doing here is I've been allowing my hi-hat to be the timekeeper for me. I've been counting using my mind, but it's not effective. I need to 
to manifest something a little bit stronger in my body. So when we get to this very slow tempo, there's a couple of things we could do. One of them would be to play sixteenths with my hi-hat. Uh, and that gives me a sort of finer resolution. There's more ways for me or more notes for me to fill the space and uh, that might help me keep the time a bit more accurately. But if I want to keep playing eighth notes on my hi-hat, maybe I'm going to count sixteenths to myself. Let's see if that improves my time a little bit. Two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. That buggered it at the end, didn't it? But I think you'll noticed, or you, you'll have noticed that the, the time was a lot better when I started counting sixteenths with all that gappiness there. So that's a good thing to practice, isn't it? You can do some sixteenths and it helps, helps kind of keep the thread, okay? Now remember, and I, I'm not just trying to make myself look less bad, but um, it's not about the thing coming out right when you do it. It's about training your brain to be able to hear and, and keep that time and giving yourself a test like this helps to sharpen your focus so remember if you try and do it, especially if you're not used to it, I mean I played with metronomes for like hours and hours and hours of my life and uh, I'm quite used to it and it's, it's nowhere near perfect is it especially at these slower tempos now um, but that's not that doesn't matter it's the it's the ability to pay attention let's go let, let's go I was, I was gonna say let, let's see where this thing bottoms out and uh, Usually they bottom out at 30, um, but this, this one goes down. This one goes down to 10. I don't, I don't, know, if I'm, I don't know if I'm crazy enough to do that. Uh, let's see. I'm, I'm going to go to 30 BPM, and let's see how we do. Now, if I just count eights, and two, and three, and four, and... somewhat surprisingly got away with that. Um, it's probably a better idea though if I count 16, so I'm gonna feel a lot more secure. Two E and a, three E and a, four E and a,
As soon as I started messing around there, I got myself into trouble. Let's do it. Let's, let's put a bit more detail into that at 30 BPM and see if I can uh, keep my dignity. Do I have any? I don't know. Three E and... You get the idea. I don't think this makes very interesting viewing, but you get the idea, right? If you, if you work your way down to like 30 BPM, um, that's gonna sharpen up your time. And I know that when I spend time with something like this, and you can see it's kind of ropey, right, at 30 BPM. I know that if I spend like 30 minutes just doing those exercises and I, I build myself up slowly and I really sit with that horribly slow tempo, in due course, it gets better. It tightens up through that practice period. And I, I'm, I'm very convinced that that's something that's helped with my timing a lot. And as I say, you mustn't worry if it comes out right or wrong. It's the, the focus and the attention that really makes it work. Now, just, to, uh, just so I can say I've done it, I'm gonna put the 10 BPM on. Uh... Why not? I'm a glutton for punishment, obviously. Okay, no, I'm not. I can't do that at the moment. I think I need to think about it. I, ah, no, I'm not gonna do that on camera. You'll have to come back another time. So, I hope you found that interesting anyway, as ridiculous as it all uh, turned out to be. Yes, 10 BPM. I've never tried that. I didn't realize the damn thing went down that slow anyway, but okay. Ah, uh, it never happened. Now, I, I'm not cutting it out though, because I'm going to, uh, I'm just gonna throw this out there. But, um, that, that's just one way of doing the tunnel test, okay? Now, it, it, work your way down to that and then do the same procedure again with two bars of click and two bars of silence. And if you enjoy doing that, try doing four bars of click and four bars of silence. That's an interesting challenge. And again, if you try that at really slow tempos, ooh, uh, it's very satisfying if on the odd occasion you find yourself doing four bars of click, four bars of silence, and you find the one. And again, I accidentally did it earlier, but you could do like one bar of click and three bars of silence or any kind of combination you like. And, and also, it's sort of, uh, if you don't want to go to like silly slow tempos, another very good way of using the click is to just have the click uh, on the one of every bar. So if you're playing at 80 BPM, you just hear the click on the one. One, one, and so on. It has a similar sort of effect. So again, this is one way of doing this particular type of exercise. As I, as I know it, it's called the tunnel test. Go away and try it and let me know in the comments how you got on. Did you do better at 30 BPM? Did you go for the 10 BPM or not? Uh, I'd be interested to hear. Now, time for you to go off and practice, I reckon.